Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So tomorrow I'll be doing a service upgrade down in Seaside Park, about a mile from the uh, half mile from the water, on an old bungalow house. I did a little short on this one a couple weeks ago. Uh, the permit's been approved. We're going over there now tomorrow to do the service. So in the meantime, I'm in my garage, and I'm just gonna prep for the work tomorrow. So there's a little less work to do on the job site itself compared to in my garage. Let's get this garbage bag all set up right here, doing stuff. This is the inch and a quarter hub. We got a couple of little boxes here. This is a combination of these boxes here. Let's so see what this is. This will just have some pieces that are ordered for the job. Okay. So here we got the PVC service head. Obviously, we're not putting that on today. I got my inch and a quarter straps to secure it. I usually get, I don't know, a dozen. Okay, here's my male adapter in one bag. Two plastic bushings. Here's where I'm gonna tie it in later on at the uh, service set. Got a inch and a quarter PVC male adapter, offset male adapter, and a couple of lock nuts, and some ground rod clamps. In this particular panel, I know that the meter pan is going to sit here and directly behind is going to be the panel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the bottom rear knockout, which should be an inch and a quarter, which is here. So that it can go, there'll be a nipple, I'll figure out the size of the nipple when I'm there, into the back of the panel. And that's how we'll achieve powering up that panel from the service here. Alright, so this is JCP&L 100 amp meter. Now, we're staying at 100 amps because this house is not a very big house. It's a bungalow house. They're never going to have a need for 200 amp service there unless they're running four electric vehicles, which would be crazy. So I don't think they have enough parking there to do two vehicles. Getting on with it, first thing I want to do is I want to take out these, ascent, these little knockouts here that are going to hold the meter pan to the house. And then here's my engine a quarter where the load side of my terminals are going to go through this nipple into the back of the panel. You buy it. And this, of course, is the hub that comes with the meter. All right, and so the hub mechanically attaches to here, and it's designed to not allow water to get into the top of there. Okay, and this right here is known as an inch and a quarter male adapter. It's like a connector, alrighty? And what I'm gonna do is just make sure I get the right size here. I know which one it is, but I'm showing you by putting it up against the work and then taking that knockout out. So the next thing I want to do here is attach the male adapter with a lock nut and then plastic bushing. Now when you go to put these bushings in, a lot of times people forget to put them in. And the whole purpose of the bushing is when you're pushing the wire through whatever kind of condo you're running through, you put this bushing on here like this. So as you're pulling the wires through, it's nice and smooth and you don't get any abrasion on the insulation of the conductor. So you don't put that on afterwards, you put that on before you pull the wires. I'm sorry, the conductors. Alright, put this in, I just tighten my lock nut like this. I'm holding the lock nut on the inside while I'm turning the male adapter just to get hand tightened 
I'll come back later with the flathead and tighten that down. I've shown you that before. With the male adapter going to the load side, from the load side to the panel on the inside. <coughs> now when you're attaching this hub that sits on top of the meter, these are irreversible. Well, these ones are. Usually they're irreversible. The PSC and G meters have irreversible screws here, which is nice because then you can't take them out. But you have very little room for error. So I like to get these started one at a time and just hand tighten them and then come back with my nut driver and tighten them down. And I'll come back with my 516th nut driver and tighten these down. forms a nice seal so water won't get in there no tape or anything this is a two inch male adapter and I need an inch and a quarter so my supplier fucked me up here so here you see I just had one last piece of this three-quarter inch plywood that I'll be using for the hundred amp service and mount that on there it's a little wet I just painted this like ten minutes ago but Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm in Seaside Park and we're going to upgrade this old service to 100 amps, new panel, new meter, new service riser. And you'll see in a moment how horrible the condition is of the service entrance cable that was put in. I don't know how long ago, but the meter is completely rusted. The riser is completely deteriorated and it totally needs to be replaced. And that's what we're here to do today. All right. So as you can see here, I'm going to show you how horrible the wiring is here the existing stuff it's this one you remember you saw the YouTube short I did about a month ago all right it is just brutal yeah. brutal now those exposed conductors are actually the ground the insulation hasn't been compromised yet and up on down on this roof so tying in the service will be pretty easy to stay that's for sure there you go that's that so hook is good cut it out comes from one of these transforms i don't know which one but possibly a transformer over there it's the only one i see and we're tied up on the, the secondary there but where's it going to where's the other transformer i don't even see any more transformers oh well there's one it might be that one, I don't know. It's definitely up to the utility company to figure that out. Gonna open up that meter we're gonna see how corroded everything is and then once we see that we're gonna understand why we're getting 140 volts in one receptacle and only 100 volts at the other and that's why my that's using your head you can see there how badly corroded everything is who even knows what it looks like on the outside this isn't terrible you see they did their bonding in here which is kind of ridiculous but this is an old school meter 
but it's already grounded right here. See? Go figure. I want to say that this service was probably put in in the late 70s or early 80s, just from um, judging the circuit breakers and the style of the panel. Uh, the big problem we had here is that the service entrance cable had deteriorated over time. And once that jacket goes and the conductors are exposed, even if it's copper, it's going to go eventually. So what ended up happening was we had 140 volts to ground on one leg of the single phase service and 100 volts to ground on the other leg, which could fry any kind of appliance. So that's why we were there to upgrade. Brutal. So as you can see, this panel definitely in need of some repair and replacement. So that's what we're here to do. Um, so what I'm doing here specifically before I w go back outside to finish up on the outside is just removing that service entrance cable and the nipple that goes between the panel and the meter enclosure on the outside. And as you'll see, it's kind of a pain in the neck to cut that steel nipple, but I eventually get it so I can finish up on the outside. All right, so right now I'm having a difficult time getting that nipple out from <clears throat> the meter to the back of the panel here. It's just giving me a hard time. Uh, so I'm going to have to sawzall out the other side so I get that nipple out of the way. So I can start working on the line side of the service here. The riser and the meter, and then of course the nipple into the panel. I want to get that done because I never want to do a service in the rain, but there is a chance of rain later this afternoon around 4 o'clock. Just like 10 or 20 percent but uh i'd rather be indoors while it's raining than outdoors so trying to get the outdoors done in the morning and then coming in here in the afternoon so that's the plan So I thought I had my camera on, but I wound up bending this PVC, it's inch and a quarter, up and then around onto this fascia on the, up, on the top side, which you'll see in a little bit. Uh, but once I had that pipe, once I had the conduit in place, now I'm able to mount my meter and uh, start getting the outside done as quickly as possible before it rains. Okay, so as you can see here, I've been bending this conduit and I'm just about ready here. I was worried about a little crease right here. It's a little kink, not too bad. Just a small one. You can barely even notice it. I'm fine with that. So we're going to cut here and cut there and join the two together. And we should be good. Now I just marked both pipes right there, both conduits. So I can cut them at the same height. And then we'll get a, a coupling and we should be good to go. Perfect. Get one strap right there, we're good. Now that I'm here editing this video, I really think I probably need to get another strap somehow right where that coupling is, like right above where the gutter ends and the soffit begins. Uh, it's really had the old service entrance cable going through, so that's what I tried to, uh, I guess, mimic. <clears throat> uh, but, but now I'm kind of looking at it. I probably should get a strap there. Maybe I'll add a uh, couple double thick unistruts or Kindorf there and put a strap. I don't know, but that would rust also. So I'm not exactly sure what I can do here. So I got my, uh, still got a couple days before I schedule the inspection for this house. Uh, but I don't think there's a problem here totally. But could it be done better? I think if I can get a, figure out a way to get a strap in there, maybe I'll do that. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas.
Okay, so what I did there was I needed to make the hole a little bit bigger to fit my inch and a quarter nipple because the uh, this meter enclosure I think is a little bit larger than the last one. So I just need to open it up, make some space so we can join the meter to the electrical panel on the inside. I come back and I use stainless steel screws to attach it. Of course, I'm using stainless steel screws to attach it to the sheeting. Uh, and what I do is I put a washer on there. And then I, behind that, I use the outdoor rated duct seal just to seal up those holes where the screws attach to the sheeting so no water can get in there. That's the purpose of that. And you can see the, uh, the duct seal. And you can even see the light on the inside there flashing. That's what's going on there. Okay, so now that my conduit raceway is in place, we can um, start identifying the neutral conductor and the two hot conductors. And I'm just going to simply push them up through the conduit to the outside, up to the service head. And then we'll go ahead and put that service head on when we're done pulling the conductors. We'll terminate the conductors inside the meter. And then eventually we'll be all set for the end of the day to tie in at the service head and re-energize the circuits I re-energized the panel to this house. So after my conductors are in place, like I said, I'm going to terminate them here inside the line side terminals. The neutral is always in the middle and the two hots are on the left and to the right. And so that's all I'm doing here. So the PVC service head is actually two pieces. One that attaches to the raceway, or rather the inch and a quarter conduit. And this cap just snaps on. You'll hear it in a second here. Maybe it didn't snap that time. But there's a, uh, like a male end on either side of the part that attaches to the raceway and then the cap just snaps in place all right so here we're ready to do some grounding now this house is unique and it was unique because there is no copper water main coming to the house it's all pvc i guess it was done after sandy if i had a guess so there's nothing to bond there but there still is metal water piping throughout the house and that stuff needs to be bonded to the system grounded neutral as required by the national electric code so what I do is I drive two ground rods here and I call it a day. That's all the grounding that's required. That's all the NEC requires. So drop the two ground rods and run a number six copper wire between the two of them back to the main disconnect, which is my main breaker inside the new circuit breaker enclosure I'll be installing later in this video. And uh, then your, your grounding is, has met the code and that's it. If you're enjoying this video, hit the like button. Thank you. If you see where my garbage can is, I, I kind of leave it there and it rains and there's no gutters on that soffit up above where I'm standing here. And later on, my garbage can gets filled with water because it all lands on the roof and comes down into my bucket there. That's kind of funny. So I just drilled a hole, a half inch hole with that auger bit, and I drill on an up, upward angle so that if water gets behind there, it doesn't go inside the house. It'll go back down on the conductor. Uh, but basically that's right underneath where the panel is on the other side. So I drill a hole. I already checked it before I just drilled. I would never drill blind, blindly like that. And then I slide, uh, I try to get as top, as close as I can to that bevel, not the bevel, the, the reveal so that it has a little protection from the rain so no rain can enter. And then I come back and um, block it off with some uh, outdoor rated duct seal to prevent any water from protruding into the, into the structure here. And then I just dig a, a shallow 
trench it maybe six or eight inches to bury my number six copper and I link the two ground rods together forming the grounding electrode system. Now remember there is no wa copper water main here it's PVC water main but I can't stress enough the, co the water piping system if it's metal you still need to bond it. It doesn't mean it's an electrode but it still needs to be bonded to prevent any potential for current or voltage to flow on that copper water pipe downstream from where it enters the house. You can see the clouds moving in and when it rains later on it really 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 rains hard. Okay, so now that the outside is done and ready to be tied in once I'm done with the panel, this is the existing 100 amp main breaker panel that was there. Uh, big time mess. Um, I don't know, maybe like maybe 12 or 14, 15 circuits. I forget exactly what it was. But everything gets replaced as it is. Uh, I'm going to put on some music here and you can enjoy this. A lot of this is um, in double time as far as the video goes. So if you like this video, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. This way, whenever I upload a video, you can be notified that the video is up and ready and that you can watch it. So thanks to all my subscribers coming up on 12,000 pretty soon, pretty fast here. Just want to say thanks again to all of you who have subscribed and come back each week to watch these videos. Thank you very, very much.
If you're still watching this video, thank you. Do me a favor, hit the like button, and hit the subscribe and notification bell. I would appreciate that very much. It helps other people like yourself find these videos. And if you find them helpful, just hitting the like button does a lot for the channel and uh, helps my channel grow. So thank you. So as you can see here, this panel is in a very tight spot. And you can see where the door is and how I'm leaning in to do this work because there's not enough room for me the electrical panel and the water heater that you see below there. It's a very small water heater because it's a very small house. So it's probably just one shower in here, maybe two. Uh, but there's not a lot of hot water to go around. Uh, and so this is a unique situation. If this was brand new, if this was a brand new house, we couldn't do this. You would need to have at least 36 inches of clearance from the front of that electrical panel to where you're standing. So that guys like me can get in there and do the work. That's what the code is there for to provide those rules and also you got to have 30 inches either side left to right of that panel as well that can all be you can look at all that in the national electric code and article 110 tac 26 and uh, i think there's a few pages of that that particular code section um, but how this allows me to keep it like this and not have to move that water heater or move relocate the electrical panel is the nj rehab subcode New Jersey is unique because what we what New Jersey uses is the uniform construction code and then it adopts certain it adopts the whole National Electric Code and deletes certain certain code sections of the code book that are unique to New Jersey. And one of those things that's unique to New Jersey are there's a lot of old houses that wiring not only needs to be upgraded updated but so does the electrical equipment. And so the NJ Rehab Code allows for the water heater to remain where it is, for the panel to remain where it is, and for the service on the outside to remain where it is. So if you have any questions at that, of the, uh, if you have any questions concerning that, you can always look at the New Jersey Division of Consumer Affairs website, and uh, you can navigate that for a little while. And um, I don't know. Sometimes you read that; it's good to know the information, but sometimes that stuff. It just leads to more gray area. Uh, let me know what you think about the NJ Rehab Code. If you're an electrician in New Jersey, what you think about it. If you're an electrician outside of New Jersey, uh, how it would be unique to where you live and what is required in the state that you work in. Now, I know uh, I get a lot of comments. Well, why didn't you use EMT? Why did you use PVC? Well, because PVC is easier for me to use. That's what I like to use. And EMT is so close to the water here. It rusts, even if it's in somebody's garage. If that door's open for 12 hours a day in the summertime while they're there, well then, you know, it's gonna rust. So that's why I use a lot of PVC.
Yes, so here you see this is a water heater with two pieces of 12 2 UF wire supplying the power to it. Uh, the homeowner revealed to me that he did this because that's the way it was before. So I said, let me correct this um, while I'm here. And there was a small upcharge to fix this. Really convenient way to do it now. This way he knows it's done correctly. Uh, but this is a 4,500 watt water heater. So 4,500 watts divided by the 240 volts is going to give you somewhere around 18 and a half amps. So you would think a 20 amp circuit would do it. The question and the problem is the code requires a continuous load like a water heater is to be multiplied by 125% to get your ampacity rating for those conductors. And that would put you over the 20 amp threshold. And so that's why we ran number 10 THHN and we put this under a double pole 30 amp circuit breaker in the panel. I'm using half inch liquid tight non-metallic flexible conduit some people call it car flex that fan you hear in the background is the fan blowing on me that's on the kitchen countertop outside this room because it did start getting stuffy in here I didn't want to open up any windows in case I forgot to open them or, or maybe they didn't open or they wouldn't close so I just it wasn't that hot but I was getting a little warm here and later on in the, in the afternoon so the water heater here only requires two conductors straight up 240 volts there is no neutral and all we need to do is hook up each of the legs to the water heater there's an upper section and a lower section I'm not exactly sure how it's wired from there inside this appliance but I'm feeding it with the 10 number 10 conductor 10 oil conductor and uh, make sure that equipment grounding conductor is connected as well and so the code says if this water heater was in another room away from where this electrical panel is then then you'd have to have a disconnect of some sort but being that this water heater is right next to the electrical panel that disconnect is within sight so as long as that disconnects within sight then the circuit breaker is sufficient and meets the code for the emergency disconnect or not the emergency disconnect just a service disconnect so if he gets a call when this water heater is not working the disconnect is right there. You could turn off the power to this water heater and start your diagnosis of what the problem is with this water heater. If you have any questions about this, please leave them down in the comments.
Okay, so you wouldn't know it, but uh, it rained like hell out here, and you can see my garbage can behind me there. It's filled with water because it came right off of the roof. Anyhow, I had to run out for because I forgot to buy this Equip Potential bonding grid that sits on the outside, and so I had to run out and get it, and came back and installed it, and um, so now the grounding electro system is complete. But what I'm doing here is I'm supplying the conductors that go between the meter on the load side to the main breaker on the inside. And so uh, I get an approximate amount of conductor through there. There's a little bit of waste, uh, but as you can see, it starts raining here. But fortunately, the wind's blowing in such a direction, so I'm not getting soaking wet. And don't worry, there's nothing live here. I don't want to get the equipment wet, and I'm really not getting too wet because the wind and the rain is blowing behind me for the most part. It looks a lot worse than it actually was. So once I uh, terminate these conductors on the load side of the meter, we'll go back on the inside and we'll terminate on the main breaker panel. So you can see it rained really bad. You can see all that water in my garbage can. I came off the roof with no gutter. So the first thing I need to do is identify the neutral conductor, the grounded neutral conductor, and I'm doing that here with the white tape. And that neutral lug is right there next to that main bonding screw, the green screw you see there, right above where the conduit enters the uh, panel here. It's the only one that has an Allen wrench figure to undo uh, the terminal here. And I have the T-handles, but these, uh, the Allen wrench set I have there is by Klein. I keep it right in my toolbox, so it's right there. Or right in my Vito TPXXL, which I love. And I should be doing an update on that bag soon. Uh, probably one of my favorites. I like so many things about it, and I need to do a better review than the one I did when I first got it. So watch out for that video coming up soon. <clears throat> so here, the main breaker is actually a part of the bus bar. And if you see that clip at the front of the 100 amp breaker right there, that clip comes with the panel and attaches it to the enclosure, which is, of course is required by the National Electric Code. I'm using number four copper here between uh, the service head, the meter, and the electrical panel main breaker here. Number four, American wire gauge, copper conductors. And I always encourage you to use copper conductors so close to the ocean Otherwise, the stuff is just going to deteriorate over time and be a headache uh, within the year, as far as I know. If you like this video, do me a favor, hit the like button. Thank you very much. Now, these plastic covers that come with the panels now are required by the National Electric Code. So if you're doing a panel upgrade, you got to use these. These go over the main conductors here, or the main terminals, I should say, uh, to protect the electrician or whoever is going to be working in this panel. I hope it's a licensed or a certified electrician doing the work. Uh, of course, if you're a homeowner and you want to do this work, you can. Um, but what these protective covers do is they prevent, they further prevent the anybody who's working on the panel from being shocked. And so they need to be installed a certain way here. I got to use these tie wraps, which I think are a little silly, but the tie wraps actually keep it in place so that nobody can inadvertently take it off. Although, if you want to take these off, you absolutely could. Uh, so then what I do is I come back and I just use my side cutters here to uh, trim off the tie wrap, do a nice clean job. And there's two tie wraps for each cover. And that's the idea. This is a rather new development in the National Electric Code. I want to say in the last two cycles, these, this was introduced, so it comes with all the panels now. I don't do a lot of 100 amp upgrades, upgrades, um, but I do enough, and I like doing. Believe it or not, I like doing these better than 200 amps because it's easier to work with. It's an easier job running that number four wire than the two watt copper or the four watt aluminum. Although I do plenty of 200 amp services too, but if given a choice. I would prefer to put in 100 amp, but sometimes that's not what the customer wants or needs. And so you always want to do what is good for the customer and not what's good for the electrician. And I, I can't stress that enough. 
but give your customers the option. Do you want a 200 amp 40 circuit panel? Do you want a 200 amp 60 circuit panel? Do you want a 100 amp 20 circuit panel? Or do you want a 100 amp 30 circuit panel? Give them all the options. Do you want to use aluminum or copper? Uh, and let them know the differences between the two. And of course, the price. That's also a big part of the uh, equation as well. Hey guys, this is the end of the video. And if you like it, do me a favor, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified of any upcoming videos that I release. And as always, thank you for watching this video and we'll see you on the next one.